Good evening and welcome to BYOB. I'm Nola Nash. I'm Terry Shepard. And, and I'm Laura Kemp. Laura Kemp. It is truly, even though she's, you know, always, you know, my compatriot over here, my partner in crime and shenanigans. Today is her day. So we are going to let her be in the uh, guest why? seat today. So we are celebrating the launch of her brand new book, the final installment in the Yellowwood series. And I've had a chance to read it already, and I cannot encourage you guys enough. Go get this book. And if you haven't read any of the first two books in the series, start with book one. You need to start with book one and just binge it, guys. I mean, this is a great, great series. You will have a lot of fun. It's fast paced, got lots of interesting characters. I, I can't say enough about it. And Laura, I am so glad to be here to celebrate your launch day. What a day, boy, you know, which it's now 730 where I live and, and the sales of digital books on this first day, you obviously have quite an advanced team out there, kiddo, that was just waiting for this. How does it feel to be on a launch day for the third book in this install this series? Well, I kind of feel like I've got a few in the hopper, so it's uh it's becoming more um more like I know what to expect, I guess. But maybe maybe I don't know what to expect. But it's yeah, it's 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 exciting. Uh, the arc team has been kind of waiting in the wings this whole time to spring into action. So I've been uh, kind of grooming them for about a month or two. I have, you know, people on the team yeah. that are, and they've come through, you know, with their reviews and because it's important to build that buzz oh, yeah. early. For oh, the book. Well, and I don't know about you, Nola, but I want to see more adventures for Justine. I mean, this one I here. Was, I when this it. ended, I went almost, you know, I was I was grieving a little bit because it was. You know, I I I love Justine, and I love kind of the culmination of her adventures here, and and it's it's beautifully done. I mean, you, you're you bring everything to such a satisfying close, but I do love the character so much that I'd almost. Like I'm, I'm wanting a spinoff series. Like take Adam oh. and do something with Adam. Yeah. What does Adam do from here on out? Like I, I have these characters that it's like, okay, I'm not done with this one yet. I've, I've got Dylan and Justine. Like they're, they're good now. Mm -hmm. But I want to know. I want to no know spoilers. About Holly. No spoilers. I want to know about Adam. Like I want to know about all these people and like yeah. give them their own books now. You know, <laughs> go Bridgerton on so, everybody and just like yeah. focus in. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good thing for your. For your, that's a good thing for Kemp Camp. I think you ought to ask in Kemp Camp if you did a spinoff series, who would that be? That's a, yeah, who are they yeah. most interested in seeing in a continuation? Yeah. Do you ever worry about your secondary characters overtaking your protagonists? They're all so rich and so good. Mm, I don't know. I feel like they're, it's like the, the crock pot, right? You get all the ingredients <laughs> and it simmers and they, and together they all make this really, hopefully, yummy stew. Mm -hmm. So I kind of see them as supporting. But um, no, I haven't thought of anybody who could take over for Justine. But maybe <laughs> yeah. I could ask my camp campers, and they could give me some ideas of who could well, take it's been over. It's such a great day, you know. This Nola, this reminds me of day one of uh, Traveler when that came out. You had a very a good, um, very good day with that, and you you've also had a kind of a second wind uh, yeah. for that book. Do you think that there are some <laughs> some similarities between your protagonist and Justine? I think in a lot of ways. I mean, for I think Shelby and Justine would be great friends and get themselves in a crap ton of trouble. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's just like us, Laura. I mean, God just like you guys are going to do in Killer Nashville, right? <laughs> Same <Yep>. thing. <laughs> you're going to need some adult supervision. Yes. You, might, you might have to be the adult, Terry, mm -hmm. supervising us. No, yeah. listen, you're you're adults. You get to make oh, your own God. decisions. Yeah, I just well, uh, no, thank you. I got I got money for bail. That's what I, I'll, I'll yeah, promise you that. We may, that. we may need that. So thank you. So was this one tougher to write or easier to write than the first two? Laura? Um, I think there was so much pressure because the first book was well received with the sequel because I had not intended to make it a sequel. It was kind of, hey, make this into a series. And I said, well, yes. But then I thought, oh, look, I'm going to have to do that. How do I do that? So there was a lot of pressure with um, the sequel. And then, yeah, I left it, um, uh, Justine, kind of in a really impossible situation. 
And I just thought, oh, I'll figure it out later. I got through the sequel. Don't worry yeah. about that third book. I got, you know, like she jumped and she landed and she was yeah. there exhausted. And I go, I'll figure out what she's got to do later. But I got her to that spot. But then when I sat down to write it, I was like, wow, this is tough because there's time travel elements that are so, I, Nola, you know. so different. I don't know how you guys do that. I mean, to keep everything organized. Oh, everything you do <laughs> affects everything else. It's just a spider web of of consequences so you have to think yeah. so heavily about what you're doing um it's difficult to write time travel but so yeah there was pressure in that element that i didn't want the whole thing to fall apart here on the last one so i definitely and felt pressure i've got the same thing going on so i'm, I'm kind of glad that you said that because you know their traveler has its sequel and its sequel is written and then there is the third book that will round up the, the entire trilogy and I'm kind of doing the same thing. It's like, okay, I know where I left Traveler. I know where I left Watcher. And that was complicated and so many timelines. And I mean, I was dealing with past lives that were you know, multiple past lives, which right. I had to make sure that lives didn't overlap because, you know, she couldn't be in two lives at once. So that timeline was very complicated, but even writing the third one, I'm kind of like, I, I kind of know where that one's where I want it to go, but how I'm getting there is. How do you the, do it? I know. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's kind of comes when you sit down, at least it does. me at the computer and I start typing, it just sort of comes which so you're I, you're a pantser then laura you just kind of go with the flow of the story when yeah you yeah mm -hmm. it just kind of always comes um i'm always convinced it won't this will mm -hmm. be the time when i nothing happens when it just <laughs> and it <laughs> always does so that's kind of the muse for me I well, like I'm, a, muse I'm a planter i have to say Ooh. that i'm a planter oh. because yeah. i because i use so much history i have to yeah. plan certain things Mm -hmm. But as far as the fiction that goes in it, I, I do tr tend to let my characters take over the story, but I have to put it within the construct of the, the historical elements that are there. So I can't pants as much as I would like to. Yeah, well, you <laughs> but, know, the, and the, I get the, lost in the history. And, and so I, I spend too much time planning. So I have to remember I'm a planter. I have to do both. <laughs> well, what I love about both of your books is that, that you don't follow genre rules. I mean, we, we, the reason we changed the cover at the last minute is because we wanted to make sure that everybody knew that this wasn't just a mystery and wasn't just a romance. But that's yeah. your story too, Noel. I mean, yeah. how do you zoom in on an audience when you're marketing? That's actually you have one of the so hardest things to do. I mean, it really is. Um, you almost have to kind of pick one. Um, and I think of where we're going with, with a lot of the books that um, – that, that I've written and that I'm, you know, continue on in this series. Um, Pam Stack, who is our executive producer, and I were talking about that. And I think we've decided to put mine more as paranormal romance because the romance mm. is truly at the heart of all of it. The adventure, the paranormal, all of that is what's driving that romance together. And so yeah. if we look at it that way, because most of my readers are women, um, I do have some men that, that enjoy the books, but most of my readers are women. And I think the paranormal romance is, is kind of the title that they can they can wrap their heads around as far as what to expect in the book. Now, there will always be some some other genres that are layered in there. But I think you kind of have to find the one that is where your readers are. And yeah. that's something that I've I've kind of learned recently and i think laura you know something along the lines of a paranormal romance is, is sort of where yours is too but you also have the you know the adventure and the mystery and you know, all of uh, all of these other yeah. things i mean even picking one genre doesn't necessarily mean that you're ignoring the others it's just how to find that bulk of the audience that's going to know what mm -hmm. that genre entails so what are, what are camp campers how, how do they self-identify laura do they identify with the genre or just with you? I think me. I think just her. <laughs> I have to agree with that. I think it's just, mm -hmm. it's, it's like camp when you come together in the summer and you got kids from this side of the tracks and you got kids from that. It's like the parent trap. You know, you got yeah. this kid and that kid. <laughs> oh, okay. And I do, I think we just all gather together around the, the campfire and 
and we find common ground in the stories that, and I, I like, that's what I like about my books and Nola's books, even that you don't have to stick with these cookie cutter type things. There's something for everybody. Mm-hmm. And even people who wouldn't think that they would like the type of books that, that maybe Nola and I write, yep. they find that they do. And I yeah, think that's been a real common thread. I think it's mind yeah. opening for people. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now, when I hear when I hear uh, Traveler in my head on the screen, I'm, I almost hear Moody Blues, Nights in White Satin, or something like that as the <laughs> opener for that one. Laura, if you were gonna, you gotta be thinking about Annette singing the Parent Trap when you mentioned that. I have an earworm. Thank you. <laughs> what? So, so what do you think would be the theme song for this book? Um, for this third book or for the series? Yeah. Whole well, thing. either way, I mean. Uh, I'm giving well, Nola time to think now. She's figured out what it's going to be for us. Well, um, well, I do have a playlist that inspired mm-hmm. me in life in a northern town. Just kind of comes to me. Yeah. Because it's a northern town and it's the life kind of here and there and everywhere. Um, I'm a big fan of 70s light rock. Isn't that funny? So I'm always, that's always going through my mind. Mm-hmm. When I'm writing like Brandy was a big part <laughs> of the last book. But then I have, since it's, since it's set... A little bit later, I have like the Red River Valley showing up. So it's this weird hybrid of like Western because I love Westerns. I love ah, the so, historical period of So Western. no urban cowboy in there? You don't have like um, <laughs> looking for love in all the wrong places? <laughs> well, that's definitely a theme for this series. Everybody's looking for love in the wrong yeah. places. Maybe, maybe, uh-huh. maybe you came up with my theme song, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> so, Noah, what about yours? I mean, that. I, oh, I, my playlist when I listen to yours is just all of the the um, progressive <laughs> rock stuff that I love. There is, I guess yeah. a lot of that. <laughs> got to there's a lot of that. I mean, I, I think you've got. Um, I, I think there's some Pink Floyd in there. Um, you know, it's, yeah. Let's let's think about you know some of their Dark Side of the Moon kind of vibe because I mean she's just she's so. She's really chill. It's the universe that's not chill with her. And so she's kind of got this vibe like, you know, what, whatever, like just, you know, solve it, fix it, do it. Yeah. Why am I here? Kind of a thing. And and honestly, I think if, if Shelby Starling had been in the 60s, she would have been a total stoner. Like that's just who she is. <laughs> she is a stoner. If I had said it in a different decade, I mean, she's, she's a bit of a lush as it is, but you know, she's, um, She's you know, horse with no name. You've been through the background, horse with no name, kind of thing. That's her in Egypt. And, you know, Roman holiday might come in for for Rome a little bit. But I mean, you've got I, I just for her. She's she's definitely one of those that is um, maybe a little indie rock going on because she's not just yeah. doesn't care. <laughs> it was like, nobody's rules, just hers. So yeah, I mean, okay. she would have a, a really unique playlist that, you know, people would be going, why are all of these songs <laughs> on the same playlist? And it's because <laughs> Shelby know. don't know who she is. <laughs> and so she's uh, just going to have right. songs yeah. until she figures that it out. Fit into a genre. Yeah, even, so, musically, even musically, so, she doesn't really. Well, and Laurie, we're, you know, we're at the end of this great first day for you. Um, what do you hope the reader will take away when they finish reading this story? How do you want them to feel? I want them to feel like emotional. I want them to feel like there's satisfactory resolution. I want them to feel like they went on a wild adventure and I want them to think about the stories long after they've turned the last page. I want it to live inside of them. And when they see something that reminds them of, you know, Justine or her friends, that it'll they'll, it'll take them right back to the time when they were reading the story. I guess I just wanted to live. I wanted to live on past. I think you've um, accomplished that. Yeah. Thank you. I, I really do. Oh, you, you both have. I mean, you're, you're, those both of those books are right here to my right in my not my TBR pile, but my when I need inspiration <laughs> for my own writing pile. I'll oh. let them drop open to a page and pick something out of there. Yeah. Well done, um, Laura. Congratulations on, on a great very, book and a great launch. And, very much. Congratulations. I mean, talking by today. I know. What a fun day. I mean, it's just, it's a joy to get to share these moments with such a good friend. And I mean, yeah. it's it's been such a wild ride for the two of us. And yeah. now we each have three books out in the world um, oh. and we get to celebrate 
every one of those book babies together. And it, it's just so fun. And I, I am so grateful for our, every bit of your friendship and just, you know, I love being your cheerleader, cheerleader as things go out in the world. I really do because you are, you reciprocate in so many ways and it's just such a joy. It really is. I need, I need my Queen um, Xbox. Where is it? <laughs> I love and I feel the same way about both of you. What a how great to be able to share this moment. The two people who have been very supportive and helpful and boosted me when I needed a boost. Of course. Happy yeah, well, that's that's one of the things that I love about watching BYOB is that you can definitely see the friendship can even though you've never met in real life yet. <laughs> yeah. There's <laughs> definitely this BFF <laughs> vibe that is out there and um it, it feels to me like it's um, exemplary yeah. of the community, right? I mean, these, this, these people we all work with when we write together and publish mm -hmm. together, supportive. We, there's no competition. Yeah, it's I just, do. yeah, it's great. So congratulations mm -hmm. to both of you for a couple of outstanding books. And Laura, what a great first day. It's been so much fun to be part of this journey with you. Thank you Thank for you that for opportunity. Thank you for being here and thanks for having me on. BYOB your own show. <laughs> <laughs> well, Laura, thank you so much for sharing with us Justine's story and and doing such a wonderful job tying it all up for us. Thank you. I know that you readers. Oh. You know me. I know. <laughs> that is not that's not a cocktail, Nola. This is booze. It's supposed to you got I the boy know. thing right today. <laughs> Yeah, I said we brought our no, boy. I, I, so, I don't know what's going on. I, mean, I think after all, all uh, my, mine's, mine's Waffle everything. House. So that's pretty bad. <laughs> I've got nothing. I never have anything to drink. I'm always dehydrated. <laughs> I did enough drinking over wedding weekend. Yeah. My, son's, my son got married over the weekend. And so there was, you know, rehearsal dinner, wedding, wedding reception. Um, I discovered a new drink. It's got gin and some other stuff in it. It's called a French 75. I don't know what it's what is in it i know that i like it <laughs> and so um yeah and now i'm rehydrating from the weekend of booze so <laughs> so we'll let this one slide no. well we'll let this one slide I, I actually almost picked up another drink and i'm like what am i doing <laughs> Oh, take a break Nola. <laughs> we got the boy we don't need the booze today so. that's right <laughs> absolutely well this has been such fun and we will see you guys for a regular edition our normal monthly edition of byob soon but thank you for joining us on this special launch day edition for wait well i mean we didn't actually say the name of the book have we said the name of the book this whole time <laughs> Oh, what is the name of your book? Stars. <laughs> oh, we're the stars. Oh, we're the stars. Yes. We all, the, all three of us know the book so well. We just, I don't even know that we said the title. <laughs> but we this is truly end. a BYOB oh, moment. <laughs> this, this is us. <laughs> we'll forget to talk about the title. I mean, all day long, they do it. So, you know, but for those of you who have not been hanging out on lunch day, make sure that you go and pick up your copy of a home for the stars and finish out the fabulous Yellowwood series. So this has been a copywritten podcast of Authors on the Air Global Radio Network. Thank you so much for joining us and join us again very, very soon. Congratulations once again, Laura. Thank you.